Greetings, YouTube. I've been asked several times in the past week or so, Prof, you've never really taken an official stance on this whole alleged boycott. Why is that? And there's a number of reasons why I've chosen to remain like uh, Sweden or Switzerland, whatever you want to call it. Just kind of remain neutral and hear from all sides as to why they're either not doing it or doing it. Part of the reason is, even though I am still shocked every day that my channel has as much support as it has in regards to it being, I don't know, top 10, top 20 influencer. I, don't, I wouldn't put a number on it, but basically somewhere in the vicinity, sometimes people care what I have to say, sometimes they don't. But I don't view myself, especially as somebody that doesn't do Alliance War and that only does for my own battle group, Map 5 of Alliance Quest, I don't view myself as somebody that has enough authority to talk about what like the top alliances in the top ranks of Alliance War or Alliance Quest or even the top spenders say. I can report to you what they say, but I can't tell you how it impacts me because in all honesty, I've never experienced that kind of thing in the game because I don't play at that level. It's sort of like being a high school basketball player and somebody asks you what it's like to play in the NBA and you're like, how the hell am I supposed to know? I'm playing with a uh, a kid that's just battling acne more than he is, uh, you know, the basketball. So that's one of the reasons. But the other reason is I view Seton, somebody that I have a lot of respect for and one of the top motivators for me to even try to have a YouTube channel to begin with, as the quarterback of this MCOC football team. He has the biggest voice. He has the most power. And until you know where he stands, everybody else kind of just has to wait and fall back in line. It's kind of like if your local grocery store owner or hardware owner or whatever says they're going to do something, but if Walmart and Target and especially like Amazon don't follow suit, then it's all going to be for naught. And today, as many of you know, Seton came out and he was literally boycotting the boycott. And once I heard him say those words, a lot of people contacted me and said, well, psh, if Seton's not doing it, then I'm not going to do it. Let's open some featured calves by purchasing units. And I keep saying, if you're going to open featured calves, grind the arena, even though you'll lose your soul, and don't spend actual cash, spend units like a free-to-play player would. Um, but, you know, the arena is mind-numbing, and for some people, they'd rather, it's actually cheaper for them in the cost-benefit analysis world to spend 50 bucks on the Black Panther's treasure, for example, than it is to, uh, you know, grind their life away in the arena. I get that. For me, as somebody that doesn't like to spend money when I don't have to on this game, regardless of whether or not a boycott is in the discussion, that's just not in the cards for me. And I have decided tonight, I grinded for about 2,100 units in the last two weeks, and I'm going to spend 1,500 of those 2,100 in a live stream, opening up five featured calves, and just, we'll, we'll have the, I can already tell you, the title of the video is going to be, what does two weeks worth of arena grinding get me? Because that's how I'm looking at this. It's a, it's an arena grind experiment for two weeks worth of grinding every arena to see what I can produce in terms of five or six star champions while basically acting like I'm a free-to-play player at this moment because if I grinded for two weeks in the arena, even if I didn't spend any money, I would still have those units to open up Cavalier Crystals. But uh, a couple things that really bother me still, and when we go to Crystals, I just want to point this out. It still really bothers me, and I put this in that video this morning, how Kabam has the four-star and under gates for Act 6. You have to defeat a certain part, of course, of Act 6 to become uncollected, and yet how many percent of, the, of these crystals are completely worthless to your progression? If you add in a combination of the four-star and uh, three-star... You're adding 45 plus 36, which, you know, quick math, 81%. 81% of the crystals you'll open are champions you can't bring in to story mode past Act 6. It makes no sense to me. I don't know, other than for synergy purposes, which, again, is just a dick move, um, I don't know why you wouldn't want somebody to bring in a four star. If I was Kabam, I'm like, sure, bring in your four stars. We're so confident that the nodes combined with the health and the attack rating and the crit rating of these defenders going to be fighting are so big, you're going to be spending a lot of potions and revives because your four stars, even at rank five with boost, aren't going to have that high a health or attack pool. And then, of course, you can go to featured items. 
and you can scroll down and you can remind yourself of so many different BS in terms of uh, different crystals and nothing is more of a BS than this hero crystal in which so many of you without knowing it um, with no fault of your own you got rid of your one stars back in the day and now you need that say one star Hulk to help you with variant four and the drop rates in this hero crystal uh, it should say guarantees a two-star champion with a rare ch chance at a one-star because it's like 80-20 the other way. Why? Because Kabam is milking out 50 units of a piece, which is absurd. These things should be at most 25 units, but probably closer to 20 or 10. They're milking summoners who are desperate for the one-stars. I know people who are more thirsty right now to complete that content for this one-star Hulk than they are a five-star Doctor Doom. That's literally no exaggeration. But the thing that bothers me the most, and this is what I want to spend the most time on as I start to think about wrapping up this video, is until the average summoner stops buying trash offers, nothing is going to change. Alliances can boycott all they want, but nothing is going to change. And it's so weird. Well, I'll have somebody send me a line message and say, Prof, I hate Kabam. I'm boycotting this game. Yeah. And then like 30 seconds later, I'll get a message from somebody like, dang it, prof, you're right. I spent 50 bucks on this legendary focus crystal bundle. And I got three crappy four stars to choose from. I'm so angry. And I'm like, why did you buy it in the first place? Because I thought I could get a five star Corvus. What? You had a 20% chance to get any 5-star. You thought you would get the 20%, and you thought Corvus would be 1 of 3? Well, sure. And then it just kind of hits you. One, this is a casino of champions. The addiction to these quote-unquote deals, even if they're jokes to even be called deals, is so real that people will purchase no matter what they put in the unit store. But the other thing is, hope is so powerful of a drug in this game that you can tell somebody there's a 0.000001% chance to get that Dr. Doom or that Corvus, and they'll say, so you're telling me there's a chance, and they'll buy it. And then they'll, of course, not get it, and they'll feel betrayed or angry or whatever. But at that point, the purchase has been made. And that's why Kabam can get away with the record amount of trash deals in a row in May. Because even if summoners know that it's a bad deal. They'll think, well, 3,000 five-star shards for 40 bucks? <sighs> I only need 2,500 five-star shards to form my next five-star. So really, it feels like I'm buying a five-star for 30 bucks, even though I'm not. So I'll buy it. Here we go. I spent $30 to get myself a five-star Thor Jane Foster. Oh, well, dang. And then you have that fatigue. It's like somebody that walks into a casino and puts all their money into a slot machine and says, I'm going to hit a jackpot on this machine. And they blink and they max bet. And five minutes later, they're walking out with nothing in their pockets and they didn't hit a thing. And they feel numb. They feel fatigued. They feel like they were mugged emotionally. And in some ways they were, but they gave them their money. The casino got what they want. They have the odds tilted to their favor and they continue to in this Marvel casino of champions like any other casino. Only in this case, you don't even get a tax break if you hit a $1,200 plus jackpot. So here's the deal, YouTube. I want to stress, even if you never supported the boycott or you always supported a boycott, because I'm also talking to a lot of people, you only have the luxury of a boycott if you have a disposable income. If you don't have money to spend, there's nothing to do to boycott because you don't have anything you can actually throw at this game. It's the people that have some money to spend or a lot of money to spend that have the most flexibility or at least the most to threaten. But I just want to have a challenge to just the average alliance. When these trash deals happen, and they've happened so often lately, please, if you want to make a difference, have your alliance mates like band together to not buy them. That's the only way that the prices are going to come down because the demand is going to be so low and the supply and the price point are going to be so high that Kabam is going to be forced to say, we, we didn't sell anything like we thought we would 
from this offer. So we've got to lower the price 10 bucks and we've probably got to add some incentives. And the marketing team will hopefully look at that and will adjust to make it more pro player in the future. But until the average player stops snatching up all of the average offers or a lot of the average offers, Kabam is going to have no incentive to feel threatened by anything. And all the one-star reviews or the threats to not log in the game, they're not going to mean anything because they're still making their bottom line. So play like you're a free-to-play player. I'm somebody that I used to spend on non-months of July 4th and Cyber Weekend and I guess now the spring cleaning event. I used to spend about three to $400. And now I usually get one early access bundle, not two, but one each time. So $100 a month for the early access bundles. I get the Black ISO store and the $5 units. So that's another 15 bucks. And so I spend about $115 a month on this game. And then... Depending on the offers, I might spend another hundred, but I went from five hundred to like two hundred to two fifty, which is still a lot of money. But I also am blessed to have a YouTube channel where I can use the revenue that I make from my channel to pour back into the game and cover those expenses where ninety nine point nine percent of people in the community don't have such a blessed opportunity. And I realize that fully. Um, and yet I still want to be as responsible with my income as possible to make an example out of my channel. So biggest takeaway. Boycott or not, the only way this game is going to stop uh, getting worse in terms of offers especially is if people stop buying the trash and they at least wait for an offer that's truly pro-player and not just pro-kabam.